Good afternoon and welcome. It is my great pleasure to welcome you to the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Monmouth County for this United We Sing. There is no more important thing to be doing together in these difficult days than to be coming together in the spirit of love and cooperation. So I offer you our welcome. Whoever you are, whomever you love, however you arrived at this beloved place, you are welcome here. Thank you. Thank you, Virginia. Thank you for your warm welcome, your hospitality, and your poignant words. Welcome to this, the 15th United We Sing joint program of the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Monmouth County and the Monmouth Center for World Religions and Ethical Thought. How do you give thanks when we are reeling from the atrocities, the violence in Kenya, Lebanon, Nigeria, and Paris? We began United We Sing after 9-11. We have been there. We unite in solidarity with people of other nations. We unite in solidarity with people diverse in beliefs as yet one in love and peace. We unite not in fear, but hope. We do not see things as they are. We see things as we are. We cannot vilify refugees. We're called to love others, and that includes Muslims, and people of all beliefs or no belief. We must act for good, for justice, for healing, for hope, for peace. More dialogue, less fear. Today we have two examples of how we can do this, and Esmet will mention them. May this time remind us that joy is mingled in sorrow. We can listen to one another Strangers can become friends. We have this opportunity for connecting at a deeper level. With a grateful heart, I thank the Mammoth Center board members. If I'd ask you to stand so others can identify you and speak with you later. Thank you for your vision and your leadership. Thank you also for your friendship. We especially thank the planning committee for this event, for Stevie, for Christine Benaka, for Melissa Fahey on the PA system, for Mary Carroll and for Paul Newland on the camera. But especially, we thank Esmet Mahmoud. We reap the benefits of her exquisite organizational skills and also her devotion and love, even in these difficult times. A reception follows and we invite everybody to come and join us for a time in the community room. Do check out our website, interfaith-mcwret.org. We invite you to become a friend of the Mammoth Center, and we have applications available for you. Any dono 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 donations <laughs> today will be used to defray some of our costs. We depend entirely on donations. Uh, a basket is available in the community room. And a few housekeeping details. First, join me in silencing or turning off your phone. And then the bathrooms can be found after you leave the earth room, turn left, and they will be on your right on the way to the community room. Now we can begin this time of celebration. Assalamu alaikum. 
As usual, I greet you with the Muslim greeting, peace be upon you. As I stand here today, seeing so many familiar faces and inviting some more new faces to be members of our family, I feel that my heart and joy are lift, uh, my heart and soul are lifted with joy and happiness and love. Just for all of us to be here together to celebrate our diversity and our gratitude to the power that's watching upon us. At the same time, I come here with a heavy heart, just from the sad and sorrow events that surround us. I have heard one saying, I don't remember who said it, but he said, as life goes on, we get consumed in life's rituals to the point of forgetting life essence. Indeed, a lot of us forget about life essence, which is to live harmoniously, graciously, peacefully, most importantly, lovingly within ourselves, our neighbors, our enemies, nature, and all creatures around us. Isn't that the golden rule that we have in every religion and spiritual tradition? Uh, as the Paris tragedy unfolds, more and more political leaders and media reporters get entangled with hate and forget about love and understanding. A coalition of 29 civil rights advocates and faith leaders led by Muslim advocates issued a letter urging, urging calling on media and public officials to bring communities together. Dividing America at a time when we need to be united only hurts democracy. It hurts our standing in the world. As our dear friend, Roshan Ellen Chada, wrote to me and the MCWRET board, and I quote, on this Thanksgiving, with so much fear and unfortunate, unfortunate rhetoric of separation around us, our thoughts turn to the atmosphere of pain and fear following the 9-11 tragic events. It was at that time that the MCWRET and the board brought in the interfaith communities together and United We Sing was born. Indeed, Russian, it was a healing effort very much worth engaging in. And it has showed us the way how to love and how love can conquer fear. I don't know how many of you have watched the video that says terror attacks and inspire made in Montreal act of love. Thank you, Sarmit, for sending it around. This has three Montreal roommates, one from New York City, one from Paris, one from Cairo. They took to one of the city main metro stations with a public plea for harmony in the wake of the terror attacks in Beirut, Paris, and Kenya, and Nigeria. Helen Mural Lizre was shot by a gunman who stormed the Baton Theater in Paris. Her husband, Antoine, wrote, on Friday evening, you stole the life of an exceptional person, the love of my life, the mother of my son. But you will not have my hatred. So no, I will not give you the satisfaction of hating you. You want it? But no. Responding to hatred with anger would be to give into the same ignorance that made you what you are today. That's his response. If you only take a look around us here in this room, we can see a solid proof of our love 
that can guide us to conquer fear and sprout healing. Besides our wonderful yearly entries, we do have two groups today that have actionable presentations. The Mosaic, mobilizing our students for action to build interfaith community. That project is involved in multi-faith learning, serving in several community homeless projects and leadership activities. Some of the Mosaic students are here today and some of them are, are going to show us a skit. These courageous young teens have shown the way how we can break through barriers and defeat ignorance and intolerance. Another example of how we can do this, Dr. Muhammad Ali Chowdhury, who will be with us later, he has presented us with a challenge, a pledge to stand up for the other. We hope that you will take that challenge and make this commitment and show the evidence of your standing up by signing the pledge. These are just a few of the reminders that as our thoughts turn to the teachings of our own respective religious traditions, that we broaden our circle to include all others. We believe that all of us are called upon to pick up the baton of diversity, inclusion, and love. And let the love begin. Hi, everybody. <laughs> um, your program is right. We're the first, um, the Daystar Baha'i Choir. Those of you who come every year may have noticed we've shrunk a little, but our hearts are still happy. Um, we're going to uh, perform two uh, pieces for you today, both of which are from the writings of the Baha'i Faith. And b before we start, I wanted to just say that, um, you know, this type of gathering is Baha'u'llah's vision for humanity. And he does talk about these uh, disasters and calamities that befall us as the way that God is preparing us for the most great peace, that there is painful growth, but that we, as, as Matt said in her story, sometimes things like this actually do bring out the goodness in people. I think most of the times. This, I want to read to you the, the words from the first uh, piece that we're going to sing so you can ponder them um, while we're singing. You are the witnesses, we. You are the witnesses of the dawn of the promised day of God. Purge your hearts of worldly desires and let angelic virtues be your adorning. Oh, no. 
Robert Topper. This is my youngest son, Elliot. Um, we're from uh, Temple Beth Miriam, which is a Reform Jewish temple in uh, Elberon, New Jersey. Um, we're really, really happy to be here. Um, I think we've uh, been participating quite a bit in this uh, um, wonderful uh, experience over the years, and I'm really happy to be able to share it with you today. Um, the, uh, the song we're going to sing is actually part of uh, uh, the prayers uh, that we sing on Friday night, um, just as uh, everyone is about to leave. And it's, it's also a prayer that's said in the evening uh, before going to sleep. Uh, it's uh, called the Hashkiveno prayer. Uh, most of the prayers get their names from the first word of the prayer, because that's easy. Um, so the prayer, actually, we're not going to do the prayer. We're going to sing a song that integrates part of the prayer, and, uh, but I, I do want to read the prayer to you because uh, it, it's a special prayer for, for those who are vulnerable. You know, there are, are, we, we have refugees, uh, we have a refugee crisis all over the world. Uh, people are, are hungry and people are sleeping uh, out in the cold without shelter at night. Um, so the words of this prayer have special resonance at this time, I think. Lay us down to sleep in peace, Adonai, our God, and raise us up, our sovereign, to life. Spread over us the shelter of your peace. Guide us with your good counsel and save us for the sake of your name. Shield us from foe, plague, sword, famine, and anguish. Remove wrongdoing from before us and behind us and shelter us in the shadow of your wings. For it is you, O God, who protects and rescues us. It is you, O God, who are our gracious and compassionate sovereign. Safeguard our coming and our going to life and to peace from now to eternity. Blessed are you, Adonai, who spreads a shelter of peace over all of us. Okay. Oops.
name Shield us from hatred, sorrow and pain Hashkivenu Adonai Eloheinu l'shalom V'hamidenu Assalamu alaikum. Peace be unto you all. We are here from the Islamic Society of Monmouth County, and we will all be presenting the same attitude of gratitude. First piece is called Dear World. 
Dear world, dear world, I'm writing a letter There's so much going on, but it's still getting better Dear world, dear world, have some faith Concentrate on this place Dear world, I know you have a lot going on The good things are there, so you gotta be strong Dear world, money is a means to survive Happiness begins when you look inside Dear world, love is the answer War is the worldwide cancer Dear world, there's so much to live for With the air in our lungs that we breathe up Dear world, we should be thankful for life So many people wish that they were alive Dear world, dear world, I pray for the starving Dear world, I pray for the dying Dear world, be grateful for all things Cause the best things in life are all free Dear world, dear world, I'm writing a letter There's so much going on, but it's still getting better Dear world, dear world, have some faith Concentrate on this place Dear world Inna lillahi wa inna lahi raji'un. We belong to him, and to him we shall return. We utter these words when we have lost someone, when death strikes, when tragedy comes pounding on our doors. But why don't we say these words when we have lost ourselves? When we get caught up in this earth that is a mere assessment, we are being tested in this maze we have been thrown into so we can find our ways back to you, God. You have given us everything. The light in our eyes, the blood in our veins, your mother, the feeling you get when you fall into her arms, your friends, the feeling you get when they tell you everything is going to be all right. But imagine now it's not. You are not so fortunate. Your dull eyes sink into your tired face. The blood stops rushing through you, and all at once, you are cold, lulled into a state of blue-black emptiness. Oh God, I did not ask for this, but you say otherwise. You don't mean to patronize, but you do. You asked for this depression. Your life was an utter digression from the truth. This is no stereotypical sin, not a heinous murder, but perhaps more figurative. You failed to see the light within, the light all around you, the presence of God within you. You didn't neglect God. You have neglected yourself, placed yourself into a position lacking divine intuition, and all this time you've been searching for a space to fill that emptiness that preoccupied your mind I hope it doesn't take some terrible tragedy for us to realize that we need to return to you. I am forever grateful for you, God. And just as the air that I breathe returns to the sky that I see, I will return to you again. Thank you. It's a common misconception by those uneducated in the religion of Islam that Muslim women are oppressed. This couldn't be further from the truth. Muslim women have had rights that women of other faith have constantly been fighting for. According to the Quran, men and women have the same spirit, and there is no superiority spiritually between the two genders. We all worship Allah, no matter what our gender is. We all have the same beliefs, and we all are trying to achieve the same reward of entering heaven in the afterlife. No gender worships better or more than the other. Both men and women are equally encouraged to seek knowledge. The Prophet, peace be upon him, uh, said, education is mandatory for every Muslim. For women back in the day, to be able to gain knowledge, they had to be a part of the wealthy upper class. And even then, they didn't gain the knowledge that they were seeking for. We as Muslim women have always had the right to seek the knowledge we wanted, regardless of what society said. Before Islam, women were considered shameful. Female children were buried alive, prostitution was rampant, divorce was only in the hands of the husband, inheritance was only for the strong, and oppression was widespread. Islam came and abolished all these practices. From the start, the Prophet Muhammad preached that women were equal to their male counterparts. The first nation to pass the law that gave married women the right to keep their property was Britain in the 1860s. 
Islam had given women that right more than 1300 years earlier. Even today, we are a minority just for being girls. We are always striving to be as, uh, to prove that we are just as good as our male peers. However, under the eyes of Allah, we are just as equal and we are grateful for th that we were given that opportunity. The other day, my friend asked me how I know that God exists if I can't even see him there. I asked him why he believes in gravity when he's never seen it in motion. He argued that God is evil. Why else would he create wars and suffering? I warned him that God created the world, but humans brought it to its own demise. He accused Islam of promoting violence. Just look at all the attacks done by Muslims. I reminded him that God says he who kills one person kills all humanity. So are they really Muslims if they don't follow God's words? He confessed that God seems selfish. Why should we pray five times a day to someone who barely even answers our prayers? I asked him if someone gave you a billion dollars, would you hesitate to pay him back five? Just look at the moon and the stars, the trees and the mountains, the fruits and the flowers, Listen to the laugh of a newborn, feel the soft touch of the elderly, watch as a mother wraps her child in a warm embrace, take a deep breath and taste the air that enters your lungs. God is there in every silence. He hears your cries and answers your prayers before you knew you even had them. He's there whether you pray to him or not, whether you believe in him or not. He is there. Just put your fingers to your neck and you will feel with every pulse a constant rhythm. Allah, Allah, Allah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. Um, I thank God for allowing us to come together one more time. Unfortunately, our Allen Chapel children are unable to come because a lot of them are going off to college and doing different things. So when Stevie called me, she said, Sandy, it's that time again. I'm like, oh my God. So I said, well, unfortunately, our children are unable to come this year, but I do have a new organized group. We have a group of 15 women who come from the Mammoth and Ocean Counties, and the name of our group is Praise in Motion. And our presentation tonight is Let the Glory of the Lord Fill This Place, and I hope that you enjoy it. Oh, yeah. 
Good evening. Um, welcome. In the light of all the things that are happening around the world, this year I decided to sing a prayer um, about Lord Ganesha, um, who is the remover of obstacles. So um, I'll be singing this prayer, and then afterwards, since you all did so well last year with the peace chant, I decided to do that again. So with your help, um, I will be able to do this peace chant with you again. Uh, can you bring the mic up a little bit? Just a little higher. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Gauri Tanayaya Dhimai 
गजेशानाय भालचंद्राय श्री गणेशाय धीमहे ग्रंथ गीताय ग्रंथ गेयाय ग्रंथांतरात्मने गीतलीनाय गीतशायाय गीतवाद्य पटवे गेय चरिताय गाय गवराय गंधर्व प्रिय कृपे गाय काधीन विग्रहाय गंगा जल प्रणयवते गौरी स्तनंदनाय गौरी हृदय नंदनाय गौर भानुसुताय गौरी गणेशराय गौरी प्रणयाय गौरी प्रवणाय गौर भावाय धीमय गोसहस्राय गोवर्धनाय गोप गोपाय धीमय गुणातीताय गुणाधीशाय गुण प्रवेशाय धीमय एकदंताय वक्रतुंडाय गौरी तनयाय धीमय गजेशानाय भालचंद्राय श्री गणेशाय धीमय एकदंताय वक्रतुंडाय गौरी तनयाय धीमय गजेशानाय भालचंद्राय श्री गणेशाय धीमय And so the next song is a peace chant. The words are simple. It's just Om, Shanti, and Om. So I guess I'll sing the first line and then it's your turn after. <clears throat> Om Shanti Om Shanti Om Om Shanti My name is Dana. I'm 17 years old and I'm a Roman Catholic. 
Hi, my name is Lily. I'm 16 and I'm Jewish. So we're here today from Teens Against Intolerance, um, and Teens Against Intolerance started from MOSAIC, which stands for Mobilizing Our Students for Action and Building Interfaith Communities. And MOSAIC was a really unique opportunity for both of us, we're in our third year of participating, um, because it brought together youths from all different religions, and it just gave us the opportunity to get to know each other and to learn a little bit more about each other's religions. And uh, one of the things that we did with Mosaic was we all worked on a community service project together. So we worked on two. One was a midnight run where um, we collected clothing and food and we went on a bus at midnight to New York City and distributed the food and the clothing to the homeless. And the second community service project that we did was Teens Against Intolerance, which is what we're going to talk about and give you a little snippet of what we do with Teens Against Intolerance. So Teens Against Intolerance um, has the goal of bringing Mosaic's message of recognizing our similarities and celebrating our differences to middle schools um, through an interactive student-led uh, assembly. And there's more than just Dana and me. Normally we have like five or six kids up here um, representing a wider variety of faiths. Um, but we're, we're going into middle schools and giving a presentation which we've developed curriculum for and we've laid the whole presentation out. Um, so one thing we'd like to do is going along with, you know, celebrating our differences, recognizing our similarities, we're going to share um, a bit of the golden rule as it pertains to each of our religions. Um, so for me, because I'm Jewish, it would be treat others as you wish to be treated, do unto your neighbor as you um, would have them do unto you. But I'd also like to share a quote from the Torah about peace and it says let them beat their swords into plowshares let them practice war no more so it just serves as a constant reminder and inspiration that it should should be easy to stop fighting and uh, for for me as a roman catholic the we follow the ten commandments which teach us to treat others fairly and justly and to uh, love your neighbor as yourself, which is very similar to what Lily said. And one quote that we have is, do to others as you would have them do to you, which is very similar to the golden rule, treat others the way you would want to be treated. So we'd like to do a little sample of what our normal presentation looks like for you guys. So for a moment, we'd like you to close your eyes. Um, and imagine that your kidney is failing and you need a kidney transplant as soon as possible and it will save your life. Okay, so keep your eyes closed. Now imagine that the only donor on the list is a person who is from a different religion than you. How does that make you feel? Do you feel weird? Do you not want to go through with the transplant? So raise your hand if you would still go through with the transplant. <laughs> Okay, you can open your eyes. <laughs> so <laughs> we do this exercise with um, our normal assembly uh, audience um, just to show the perception that most kids have, that most people have, how it's innate in just human tendency to stereotype. Um, and the first step in reversing that stereotyping is to recognize it. Um, so obviously this audience is a little different, but um, for the most part, you'd be surprised at, at how many kids didn't raise their hand for, for that exercise. Um, so this program is really important to me because I just think that humanity needs to get over itself. And what I mean by that, <laughs> what I mean by that, um, there's, there's this, this picture, this infographic that I use um, in the normal presentation and it says there are good Christians and bad Christians, there are good Muslims and bad Muslims, there are ethical people who live with religion and ethical people who live without religion and get over it and stop worrying about what makes us different and celebrate that we're different because wouldn't it be so boring if we were all the same? But on the other hand, there are things that make us similar and that's also important. Um, and I also like this project so much because, especially in light of the recent um, Paris attacks, it's so important not to let our ignorance turn into fear, to turn into hatred, and instead to turn to love. Okay. 
and one of the, just real quickly, one of the things that I um, love about Teens Dance Intolerance is that we're teaching youth um, about these stereotypes so that they can recognize them and know for the future not to just judge someone based on what they look like or their religion or their race and to be more open-minded and accepting of others. So if you're the parent of a middle schooler or if you're a teacher at a middle school and you would like to see our presentation at your school, you can find us at teensagainstintolerance.org or you can email us at info at teensagainstintolerance.org. Thank you so much, everyone. <laughs>
Thank you for clapping for us. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Let me begin with the traditional greeting of peace. Peace be with all of you. My name is Muhammad Ali Chaudhry. I'm president of the Islamic Society of Asking Rich. I want to thank Joe Ritako for recruiting me again this year after a few years break to be a part of this. And in the spirit of Thanksgiving, I would just like to mention that I truly enjoyed the prayers and especially the skit by the Mosaic team. Indeed, God could have made us all the same. In fact, there is a verse in the Quran that says that. But God says that I made you into nations and tribes so that you may know each other. You may respect each other, not despise each other. So the message of love, respect, affection, and for peace and security for all in the world is what we all seek for and work for. So I was asked to speak about a pledge that grew out of a conversation a few months ago at, Rutger, at, at Drew University. And I want to share that with you because in the many years of work that I've done in academics, in politics, in business, I have found that lack of education, lack of understanding the other, is the root cause of all the hatred and bigotry that we see. <laughs> that as people begin to know each other as individual human beings, many of those stereotypes do disappear. So in March of 2015, as a member of the Interfaith Faith-Based Advisory Council of the Homeland Security Department of New Jersey, I was at a meeting at Drew University. And we received a report from the security officials about all the horrible things that were happening around the world and the threats we were facing and what we needed to do to secure our nation our state, and of course, our houses of worship, which is why the faith leaders are there, so that we work with Homeland Security to make sure that if there are any threats to any house of worship, that we are there to support them and so forth. After hearing the report, which talked about, you know, there had been three Muslims who had been shot in Chapel Hill, California, North Carolina, uh, Jewish cemeteries had been desecrated, and other events had happened that you know, would horrify all of us. But after the report was over, the director was just gonna go on to the next item. So I raised my hand because it bothered me a little bit. So I asked this question. I said, as faith leaders who are here, 50, about 50 people around the room, what is our role when we hear about all these horrible things? What is our responsibility to take action against any of these things that could possibly be uh, done that, that we could do. So I said, as far as I was concerned, all this work that we are doing is meaningless unless we get some results. So I asked myself, how would I know that we are succeeding in this work, that our work is making a difference, all this interfaith work that we do? So to me, the test was, that I would know that we are making a difference when we see the day. 
that when Muslims sitting among themselves, hear someone around the table say something hateful about a Jew or a Christian or a Sikh or a Hindu, and another Muslim at that same table stands up and says, that's not right. And the Jews sitting among themselves, who may be talking about Muslims or others, and another Jew stands up and says, no, that's not right. So I asked the group if they would be willing to sign a simple pledge. And that simple pledge will read as follows. I will go right to it because I want to get into some action with you. I asked them if they would be willing to sign a pledge like this. The wording, by the way, has been edited over the several months by several people. So it may not have been the exact words I said that day, but it's pretty close to it. I said to them, and by the way, I made a little logo for this. <laughs> so, and we have a website. It's called standupfortheother.org. And we have a Facebook page, facebook.com slash standupfortheother. And you can see a lot of the activities there. And in fact, on November 1st, we launched this pledge formally at the State Museum in Trenton with several community leaders from all faiths present, including two state senators who came and spoke and took the pledge on the stand. So here's what it says. So while interacting with members of my own faith or ethnic community or with others, if I hear hateful comments from anyone about members of any other community, I pledge to stand up for the other and challenge bigotry in any form. And that's one sentence. So our goal is to have millions of people sign this. Now why do I ask people to sign this pledge? First of all, let me say that each one of us, in our own individual capacities, as workers, as fathers, sons, brothers, cousins, relatives of any mothers, grandsons. I have a nine-month-old grandson that I babysit for, and I love that. That we individually must develop in our own self, in our own commitment, our own personal ethic, not to be bigoted. Because it is just wrong. It is just non, it is inconsistent with being a human being. God created human beings to be peaceful, to be loving of each other and loving of God. Amen. What do all the scriptures teach? Love God and love thy neighbor. Yes. So that's what this is all about. So we individually have that responsibility to do that. But I feel that if I hear someone else say something that's horrible, then it is also my responsibility to stand up and say, no, that is not right. Because I believe that unless we do that within our own communities, people think that if you don't say anything, you stay silent, it's okay. They laugh at it, they have fun. But if you stand up and say, no, that's not right. And I know that's a very difficult thing to do. It's very challenging. It can be very uncomfortable when you're challenging a relative or a close friend or, a, or even a boss. But that's what I'm asking you to do. That's what I've committed myself to do, to make sure that we get each one of us, and I think if everyone's sitting in this room, people coming from different faiths, different cultures, different races, can say that to themselves, that if I ever hear that from anyone else, I'm gonna make sure that I stand up and hopefully that person would never say that again. And I believe that can have a tremendous effect. So at this point, I would need to end, but I want to ask you to please take a pledge. I believe there are copies available to you in the back. Dr. Ismet Mahmoud has them. I would like you to sign 
And if you feel free, you can add your name and email. If you don't want to do that, that's perfectly fine. If you would like to add any comments or suggestions for us, please do that. Certainly go to the websites and follow that and encourage others to do the same. With that, I want to thank you and wish you a very happy Thanksgiving. all of your help, not all of chorus dancing tonight. So there's one dance movement I'm going to teach all of you. And when you see it in the dance, would you do it with us? So in the song, you'll hear the line, God is a river. Could you raise up a fist? Close your fist. God is a river swimmer, so let go. And as, that was beautiful. And as you were letting go, I'd like you to imagine that you were letting go of all that no longer serves you. All of the hatred, the prejudice, the things that we've been talking about tonight, let it go. So we can come into a new year, a new being, newly unified. So let's try that again. God is a river. Swimmer, so let go. Beautiful, beautiful. So when you see that gesture in the dance, would you kindly join in with us? Okay, wonderful. Ready? Just a storm 
God is a wild raging rapids and slow meandering flow. God is a deep and narrow passage and a peaceful sandy shore. God is a river swimmer, so let go. God is the river swimmer. Avery melted down. This is a little bit much for a two-year-old today. My heart is, I, don't, I can't even say it enough, my heart is so full. This is my Thanksgiving, and um, I want to say thank you to everyone here, first of all, because without you, we wouldn't be here. We'd all be, we're all family. I want to, I have a few thank yous. I usually write these notes as I'm sitting, so I don't always get everybody. Um, but I think I have it all. I apologize if I don't. Um, I want to thank the um, UU community of Lincroft because through generosity and teamwork with the um, congregation here, we are able to fulfill all the projects that we do at the Mammoth Center for World Religion. So a hearty thank you. I couldn't think of a better word. I, I wrote down thank presenters, but it's not presenters. I, maybe you could come up with a better word. It's not presenters. Thank you, family, for sharing all different ways of giving thanks and showing gratitude. Thank you so much. We will not disappoint. What is a Thanksgiving feast without a feast? And in just a few minutes, we are inviting you all to join us in the um, community room. You know, it does become a little bit chaotic. There's bountiful food from all different ethnicities and subs for people who don't like to experiment too much. <laughs> there's a lot, there's a lot for everybody, veg vegan, vegetarian, all, all, everything. Everything's there. Everything we all need is there and a lot to be grateful for. Um, one thank you that I'm going to ask you to give is Behind the scenes are two people who have been working for hours and hours and hours to um, get all the food ready, all of our donations. And um, one of them is Georgia Thomas, and she is also on the board of the Mammoth Center. And her cousin Ophelia, and they, are, they work like, it's beautiful. It's beautiful to watch them work. It's like a dance. So if you get an opportunity to thank them, please do. Two more things. One, um, I say this at the end of um, each one of our major presentations. Um, everything that we do from the Mama Center for World Religion is free, free of charge. If you um, wish to donate, um, there will be a basket as you come in, and um, we appreciate it. But the board is a, we don't have any grants. We work, we all do everything we do from our hearts, from our hearts. And Esme, correct me if, I don't, if I've missed something, but I think the last thing is that every year we do a group picture from all the people who have performed. And if you see, there's a gorgeous poster out somewhere in the hallway there of a previous group. 
Um, and it's uh, when you just come in the uh, meeting house, you you are greeted with this diverse collage, and it's just it looks like we look. And well, I'll say one more thing: standing up here is makes it makes my year. Just makes my year. So thank you so much. What? We have a. Uh Another uh, presentation. Uh, my name is Skip Lieb. And uh, I'm the uh, choir director for our uh, Roots and Wings Drum Choir. Uh, Roots and Wings is the drum choir of this congregation. And our name comes from a Unitarian Universalist hymn, Roots and Wings. And we've also selected the name because the music is Roots music. It's music where most all American jazz and most American pop music came from. Now, this music that we play is immigrant music. It's from immigrants. It's from West African immigrants that came to this country. They came in the Ballet de Guinea, the Ballet de Senegal, okay? And they, uh, they came and uh, they put on shows, dancing and drumming shows, and they found a lot of people in this country liked what they were doing. And some of them stayed. And they made a career out of traveling around the country, teaching and giving this music to us, joyously sharing this music with us. No holding back. They played it with us, taught us how to play it, and they still travel around the country and teach us how to play this West African music. So, as somebody before was talking about standing up, I feel that our drum choir stands up when it plays the music, stands up for immigrants, all right? And Howard Trump be damned, right? Donald Trump be damned, right? All this bigotry about immigrants, right? I say we stand up for immigrants, we play their music, we enjoy the culture, and, and uh, we're gonna uh, actually put, are you gonna do the photograph first? Uh, after the photograph, we're gonna do some drumming before you go in next door. Please get up and dance, feel free to get up and dance. Thank you.